What is up guys, Moon here, aka Natan, back for another episode of Seduce Me, and last episode we finished the party, we met Malix the Devil, and we learned the difference between devils and demons. We also figured out that um, our mansion has a spell to protect it from evil magic, and us too, and it was cast by our grandfather who apparently knew about magic, but yeah, we learned about all that stuff, and now we just woke up after hearing about all these people saying they love me and stuff like that, so. It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across from my bed. A sigh escaped from between my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What do I do at 7 a.m. in the morning? Work on homework, make some coffee, explore the house. I decided it was a good idea to wander around the house, and I never really explored it as much. I never really explored it much as a child, so there was bound to be a new surprise. Well, come on, feet. Let's go on an adventure. I stood and exited the room, hoping that the boys were still asleep. I began, wa I, began to, I began to wander the halls on my on my end of the house, exploring each door to find what was in the room, each, each door to lead to. Quickly, I found an old office, a desk chair, sat by a far side, and a large bookshelf of documents and memorabilia donned, donned its nooks and crannies. There were, couple, there were a couple of pictures of me growing up peeking from the shelf as I walked further into the room. I don't believe I've been here. I've been in here before. I tried to recall memories of ever seeing this room coming up with nothing as a result. Well, the room was new to me. Did I want to disturb the furniture? I'm curious. I gently opened the shelves and drawers and saw, saw in the room, and a couple of them b were books and even sewing kits. I assumed they were used for my grandfather's toys, so I left them be. One drawer, however, was locked, no matter how many times I pulled it. Grr, come on, open. Nothing. It was. It would not budge. The drawer beside it, though, did reveal a laptop. Why is there a laptop in the drawer? I lifted it from the drawer and carried it over to the desk and chair, opening it. It was a high-tech laptop with, ret with a retina scanner on a pass lock. I was not sure whether or not I would try to unlock it or not. Uh, try. I, I decided to try. I turned on the computer and leaned my face near the retina center, lining it up with my eye, the camera. To, to, surpri to my surprise, I heard a ping some from the computer before the screen opened to a desktop. Huh, look at that. On the desktop were documents and folders labeled with different aspects of, of the Anderson Company. Taxes, profits, bylaws, products. The list went on. If I really did want to become the CEO of Anderson Company, I had everything at my fingertips. Dad would be sure would sure be impressed. Mon icon, however, stood out from the rest. Virgo? I double clicked on the icon, but no window came up. Instead, I heard a large click from one of the drawers that was locked. What the I slowly left my I slowly left my seat and walked over to the drawer, attempting to open it. Again, it slid open smoothly in the direction of pulling my hand. In the direction I was pulling my hand, revealing two books. One was a plain black journal with the tie to keep it closed. The other was a bound in was bound in leather with cryptic symbols all over it. I took out the journal and skimmed through it, seeing my father my grandfather's notes. They were all detailed explanations of opinions on the findings of the on demonic magic. He really did know about magic. I sat down at the desk and read through the journal further. Finding drawers and sketches of symbols, find drawings and sketches of symbols and magic circles, each with their own different meaning and effects. It was all fascinating. There was even a page of important spells to know. I read through them and trying to memorize them in my head. I don't know what came over me, but I started feeling more energetic and more powerful simply reading my grandfather's notes. I was suddenly aware that the energy that was surrounding my body and the power that was surrounding the house. The more I read, the more powerful I became. However, my mind suddenly froze and I found myself walking back to the drawer, putting the bu bu book back and closing the drawer. The lock reset and I snapped out of it. Huh? What? I shook my head and looked at the drawer, realizing that what I had done. I walked over to the desk and reopened the lock, but suddenly felt the need to stop. Something held, something held me back and didn't want to pry anymore. I already had. More than I already had. I was curious beyond belief, but I obeyed my thoughts for now. Eventually, I would come back and look at it. I returned to my bed, feeling the, feeling the weight of the of the morning drag me under my covers to try and sleep again. I had energy, but I was I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday. Nothing was nothing was happening today. 
Come on, eyes. Go back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. I looked at my phone to check the time once again. It was noon, yet it felt like I had slept for much longer. Why is time going so slowly? I sighed, got changed in normal clothes, and went to the main hall and sat in the stairs. Sunday Sundays were very boring. However, the muffled sounds of battling caught my attention. Huh? I quickly went back to the back. I quickly went to the backyard in response to the noise I had heard. In the yard were all five of the boys practicing practicing fighting. Sam was in the middle with the other four surrounding him, throwing punches and kicks at him. Sam, Sam, being the strong strongest of the bunch, blocked and dodged each almost masterfully. Don't disturb them. I just watched. The boys were very much in the in the world in their own world, focusing on the training they they were all in. It was better not to disturb them. I checked the time and decided to head inside to the kitchen. I was getting hungry and I was sure the boys had need to eat soon, so I so lunch was a must. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Lunch was particularly hard. I decided to make. It wasn't particularly hard that I decided to make. Coconut sandwiches, pizza, simple chicken and rice. Um, let's do simple chicken and rice. Got to keep the energy and strength up with protein. I took my time to make almost perfect chicken breast alongside with rice. Cooking cooking wasn't hard unless you didn't know what the, what you were doing in the first place. I placed the food in the dining room. However, none of the boys were there. By the time I brought the final dish out, I carried the dish to my the main lobby, catching the boys separating into di- into different groups of in the different rooms of the house. Part of me wanted to go to the particular to one in particular. The other part of me wanted to leave them be and take the food in my hands to my room and eat. Maybe I could go out today with my, with the boys' focus on training. Uh, let's find one of the incubi. I clearly rushed back to the, and grabbed a second food dish before hunting down the boys. I couldn't find any of them. I could. I could only shrug. I can only sh- shrug, though. They knew. They knew that where the food was. So I went back to my room instead and ate alone in my room. It's not my problem. I turned on the computer and started started the jam to music as I ate my food. As I ate, I began to think about going out. There were so many places to go, things to do. Pink Lady Cafe. Uh, Pink Lady Cafe. Let's go there. I arrived at the Pink Lady Cafe ready to relax. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to be stuck at home on the on a Sunday. Besides, the cafe always had something new to drink, no matter how often it became. I entered the double doors and looked around. Not many people were here, and Kay didn't seem to be working today. Oh well, she can't always be working. I made my way to the pastry bar and took a look at the cafe, at what the cafe had to offer that day. There was always something new. Now, new. Now matter when. I think it's supposed to be no matter when you came. Something new no matter when you came. Which is which is what kept me pull which kept kept people coming, myself included. As I browsed at the lights, my mouth began to water. I had just eaten earlier, but the cafe's pastries always look good enough to tease your appetite. Backed into a hunger hungry state. Both the smell and the look of each dessert was carefully crafted to appease you. You didn't you didn't regret buying one and biting into it. I finally made a selection and headed back to the cash register to purchase my treat. What can I get for you? Hi, I'll take a couple of chocolate and raspberry macarons and a pink lady latte, please. Coming right up. Lily was, Lily was Kay's assistant who mainly stuck in the cafe's finances of computer work. However, when Kay wasn't in, Lily took over becoming the face behind the cash register who gave you what you needed. Lily, where's Kay? Kay had to fly out to New York suddenly. She said it has something to do with delivering something special to someone. I'm not too clear on the details. Oh, okay. Sounds like fun. I wish I could, I wish I could go to New York. Don't we all? Here you are. Enjoy. I took my order to the far corner table and, and got comfy. The pink lady, tel- the pink lady latte was a special cat. Was a, was a cafe special that everyone adored. It was a normal latte with a very subtle raspberry flavor. The foam was pink too. Before I could h- indulge, however. A voice stopped me. Oh, hey! Mm, we're on that good route. <laughs> we're on that good route. <laughs> Getting some of that Naomi. Uh, I looked up to see Naomi into the cafe with a smile towards me. I smiled back, not expecting to see her. Hey, Naomi. Mind if I join you? 
Not at all. Naomi nodded before quickly getting herself a cafe, a coffee, cake slice, and latte, and joining my table. I've been wanting to try their latte for a while. Is it any good? Uh, I like it. It has a nice raspberry flavor. Why did you get it then? Mm. Why did you get it then? Naomi gently blew over her latte to cool it before sipping it, smiling at the taste. Mm, this does taste good. I'll have to get this from now on. The raspberry is a really nice compliment with the coffee. I giggled. Naomi loved food when it, when it wasn't made in the school cafeteria. She wanted to own a restaurant one day, but always focused on studying the business side. Naomi had natural cooking skills that made grandmothers seem like a novice. They seemed like novices. Novices at making you amazing food. You should get macarons next time with it. The raspberry macarons definitely bring out the flavor in the latte. I should. Naomi slowly grew a lot of, uh, put a lot of thought, grew a look of thought on her face as she stared at her latte, probably thinking about food again. It was during these moments that I got to see a simpler, most, almost beautiful side of Naomi. She was very smart, smarter than me. However, she always held seriousness very close to passion, dedicating her heart to her dream. It was inevitable. It was inv inevitable. Inviable. I sipped my latte and ate a macaron before speaking and breaking her thoughts. Thanks, by the way, for coming to this impromptu party. I know it was last minute and all. Naomi broke away from, from looking at her drink to looking up at me in surprise, then with a smile. It was my pleasure, really. I mean, our pleasure. Suzu came too and all. <laughs> Naomi blushed a bit before clearing her throat and taking a sip of her latte. She then looked at me again with a slight frown. But hey, how are you holding up from that? I'm sure meeting all those business people was tiring. <laughs> I wasn't. In, it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. It was just the sadness of it that tired me out. Well, I'm sure you did great. It was a great party. The food was amazing. It was amazing. I slowly began to remember the party, remembering how I felt alone throughout it. I wanted to be friend I wanted to be with my friends, but I had to put on my business air to impress my guest and my father. Did I try too hard? It was supposed to be a simple party, but I felt like a felt like a job interview. Before I got too deep in my thoughts, I felt a hand gently cover mine. I refocused my thoughts to reality, seeing Naomi gently hold my hand. Hey, I know that look. You're about to overthink it. Don't. You did great. I'm sure of it. I stared at Naomi, surprised that she caught into my thoughts, and happy to know she was she was that, ugh, that she cared. Thanks, Naomi. Naomi smiled and blushed, giving me a small nod. She was absolutely adorable, and she smiled like when she smiled like that. I didn't know how, but her smile was able to make the room lighter. <coughs> Girl. <coughs> <laughs> Nomi then pulled her hand away, placing it back to her latte, and the other hand cupping the mug, and sipped her drink. Naomi licked her lips and let out a sigh. This is really nice. A relaxing Sunday afternoon at a cafe. Almost like a date. All of a sudden, Naomi's face turned pink as she looked at me, confused. I tilted my head and gave her a quizzical look. Naomi, are you alright? You're turning red. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting in there, good gas. <laughs> Naomi must have snapped out of her trance, the fa and it, she fanned herself and tried to look calm from whatever was on her mind. Uh, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Really, just a little warm, that's all. <laughs> Naomi brought her latte up to her mouth and began to drink, practically chug, practically chug it down. It was actually kind of cute how flustered she got from the simple statement. I giggled quietly before... I giggled quietly to myself before sipping my latte. Naomi and I eventually lost track of the time and wound up chatting until I, until the late afternoon. When the cafe wasn't ho hopping, Lily, Lily was would join us and we'd talk about silly things like TV shows or movies. Oh, wow. It's getting late. I gotta get home or my mom will flip. Oh, uh, okay. Would you like a ride home? That would be great, thanks. We'll click ahead to Naomi's car to Naomi driving me home. It was nice to be alone with her rather than have the explosive Suzu around. I preferred Naomi's calm logic anyway.